And now we are recording. Okay. I so, love your title. Let's talk. Where did you come up with the title? I'm curious. Um, failing flat. Um, God, I don't know. I think it just popped into my head. It was something about. Um, I guess I was thinking about Clement Greenberg. Oh, okay. I was thinking about um, media specificity in terms of painting because in my practice, I was actively pushing up against that stuff. Uh, and so one of the things that, you know, the tenets of his sort of modernism is that, um, you know, the work has to be really specific to the medium and therefore right. paintings have to be flat. So right. I thought the idea of um, making a painting and in particular, like using, looking at a lot of the work that sort of, um, uh, I don't know, like the, the icons of that modernist tradition, right. yeah. looking at that work, but building it out of sculptural form. So in a sense, like I was sort of failing at doing <laughs> what he really wanted to do, but I was excited by this, uh, yeah. this work of the past. And uh, excited by the idea of kind of like exploding it into a three-dimensional space. Yeah, um, I, I, the title makes a lot of sense. And I think all painters, really good painters, work through Greenberg at some point in their life. I think sort of as a passage into how can you make a painting now because I did that in my younger days and really rebelled against what he had to say, even though it was like in his time it was great, a great idea. Yeah, that absolutely. Changed. Yeah. And, you know, I had a critique by him when he was 82 years old. Oh, wow. What did it say? <laughs> and I was making these big black and white, you know, Xerox-oriented paintings. And he goes, why don't you use more color? You know? And, and I, you know, he didn't get it that I was using the vernacular of printing processes. Yeah. And I wanted it as content and reflective in the work. And he goes, get rid of that fucking content, you know? Uh, but, so I know. Understand. Back to the gesture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was doing a mediated gesture, which was very different from what he championed. Yeah. So I love your title, though, and that makes real sense, sort of quoting Greenberg's sort of view post now. Yeah. That's a great idea. Well, thanks. Hey, not to get off topic, but what do you think about Wade Guyton's OS uh, at the Whitney? Okay. It well, seems very I in line love with what... the work. I love the work, and I... I wish I could have even spent more time in the show. Uh, I'm a big fan. My own work has crossovers, you know, with that type of way of working. Uh, though I still use paint, but I use other processes, you know, like in my last show with, you know, the uh, in inkjet prints on transparency film, uh, which was my way of trying to find a way, not just being photography oriented, but addressing painting with that. And, and I'm still working with ideas of adding paint to those sort of prints, mm -hmm. but uh, but I I like Wade Guyton's show. It was a bit crowded and overhung in places, and I thought one room was a little too much like walking into the Dia Foundation or something. But uh, but I like the work. I love yeah. the the prints on canvas. It yeah. seems like that sort of mediated gesture through technology slippages and stuff is like a place that you're totally mining. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. And awesome. I, I love that and. And to me, what he does is no question their paintings, you know, as much as they're anything else. So uh, I know I don't have a problem with that. I know a lot of people. When I was in New York, when I opened my mouth about that, New York, everybody's much more hypercritical of each other sure. and everyone. And a lot of people jumped on me at a at a party about because I said I really like the Wade Guyton show, but they truly weren't fans of that type of work. So and the idea of like calling something a painting, I think, is. I don't know. I'm just kind of over it. I feel like, um, you know, at Mark Mark Bradford's little um, sort of interview during one of his um, Art Twenty Ones, he talks about yeah, real casually, just like it's a painting. It looks like a painting. It's the size of a painting. It's hung on a wall. It's a painting, even though there's no real paint. You know, it's all like collage, posters, yeah. etc. And I think that that's so interesting to be so nonchalant uh -huh. about that because I'm the same way. I, and I think a lot of the artists that are in Failing Flat are the same way, is that it might not have to be literally paint used on a thing, but that's the, that's the conversation that it's having is with the history of, of painting. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of like the, you know, the, just the world that it's existing in. Exactly. I think it, that type of work, you know, has the, the whole vocabulary of a 
painting vocabulary. Yeah. And uh, I know Faith Gay's, to me, her work, I always look at it. When I look at it, being, coming from being a painter, I immediately look at it in that way. Yeah. So maybe I'll talk a little bit about um, no, some I, of the I, artists I, that are going to be in the show. Um, you mentioned Faith Gay, uh, which I'm real excited about. So uh, Faith Gay I've known from Austin, which is mm -hmm. where I've been for like 10 years, as you know. Yeah. Um, she got her BFA from University of Texas in Austin in 2005. And um, her work is um, they're on traditional support, so it's a, it's a wooden panel. And then there's these big cardboard kind of knot knockouts, notch outs that um, these huge shapes that are for the most part flat. They're um, taped like with uh, packing tape and ribbons and sort of printed material. And so they're wrapped around. So there's these, um, I don't know, these kind of like flat rocks of image. And then those are sort of adhered to the surface. Right. Um, right. A lot of them have like a, like a real. 80s vibe like um and i think kind of about like the visual vocabulary of like lisa frank uh and some of that like sort of feminine 80s archetypal imagery of clouds mm -hmm. rainbows unicorns stuff like that the works that are in and flowers the works that are in the show in central track um for the most part steer clear of actual images because that's the I really specifically wanted to look at people that were doing non-representational, right. sculptural um, experimentations, yeah. talking about yeah. painting. Um, but yeah, that's Faith. And she talks about um, flowers, rainbows, clouds, all this stuff, because she's sort of like an armchair naturalist. So I think that's really funny is to um, sort of all that, all those interests go through this. That visual content. Yeah, and it goes through a it goes through a weird filter of um, Technicolor, eight bit sort of um, psychedelia almost. Yeah, yeah. Well, it seems to quote almost that whole psychedelic sort of hip stuff. Totally nostalgia. You know, we look back at. Yeah, and I totally. love her attitude of bringing that in because it's personal. You can tell that's personal stuff in her life that oh. she thinks about and looks at. No, that's her. That's her. And I've known about her work. I mean, when I was an undergraduate at University of Texas in Austin, she was sort of like a forefather of like this do-it-yourself scene. And so I've admired her for um, you know ten years now or something like that. So to have the ability to work with her in this sort of way is super exciting for me. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah. So um, I don't know if you've heard the work of Shane Tolbert, but he's a Houston artist. I've, the name, I know the name, and I probably will recognize the work immediately when I see it. So uh, I know I've seen it on glass tire and stuff. So. Yeah, he uh, got his MFA from UC Santa Barbara, uh, relocated back to, all, to, I'm sorry, to Houston, Texas. Um, he was in the Texas Biennial last go-round Okay. Uh, yeah, where Virginia where Rutledge was the curator. Yeah. And that's initially where I saw his work. And then he had a solo show at um, the now defunct Devin, shoot, I'm going to get it wrong, Devin Borden Hiram Butler in Houston. Um, the work yeah. that I saw yeah. there. Yeah, I've seen the work. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like these, um, the work at that show were, were these huge canvases that were dyed uh, over and over and over again, like indigo and black, and just like, a, a, you know, they went through several dyeing processes until they were almost totally opaquely black. And then Shane would like paint bleach on there in sections. And yeah. so moments yeah. where two, two sort of um, gestures overlapped, they would get mm -hmm. double bleached. And so there's this really interesting reductive way of painting and thinking about the gesture yeah. and the field and like all these sort of like big painting ideas, but using this really funny means. And um, in the new work, um, he sort of burst and exploded into three dimensions with the addition of casting stuff in salt that's dyed colors, um, adding plaster that's sort of like in, in the plaster is embedded um, fabric 
whether it be the dyed fabrics or canvases or whatever. But so right. um, sort of playing with like the actual surface of the painting as material that could be twisted and warped and um, yeah. torqued. Um, uh, yeah, yeah that sounds work. fantastic. I'm sorry. And seems to fit the nature of your show too with the Greenberg connection, but about what gesture is now today yeah. and how an artist play with that. Yeah. So I'm real excited. He's got some large scale, one large scale work and the rest are sort of modestly scaled. Um, but each one has like a, a, um, a different thing that it's trying to do, which is interesting. Like I feel that um, there's an amount, there's a, a curiosity with the way that he works with materials and image and the mark and yeah. each one um, of his works sort of illustrate um, a very specific, weird misunderstanding <laughs> of how art materials can go together. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sounds like an interesting, like, you know, rubbing together of several things, fighting yeah. and sort of like a wrestling match with, yeah. with kids or something. No, a lot of the stuff, it is, it is, there is like a, almost a violent collision of some of the stuff where, um, and when I was in a studio, some of the things like literally made me laugh. And I'm not sure what that was, but I know it was like a really good thing. Yeah, that sounds um, like it just affects you when yeah. you're confronted with the work. So that's great. Um, so those are the two Texas artists. Uh, what I wanted to do was make sure and pair Texas artists with artists that were um, working elsewhere. So sort of bringing other people into the conversation and hopefully like, um, you know, they'll get in touch with one another after the show, potentially come to the opening and um, right. hopefully work together in the future. But um, so there's two other artists in the show. One's from New York, one's from Chicago. Um, the one from New York, his name is Ivan Ballin. Mm -hmm. uh, Ivan got his MFA from Cranbrook in 2006. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as with most people who went to Cranbrook, high craft, you know, uh, is really, uh -huh. really um, a thing with his work. And... I had a conversation with him in talking about the relationship that Highcraft had to his work. And he felt that even though from my perspective, I was like, wow, this is incredibly crafted stuff. He was like pushing up against that stuff in Cranbrook. So um, what his work is, is um, it's on a traditional support, like all the other works in the show. And uh, he'll build like um, cardboard sort of collage like this three-dimensional thing with duct tape cardboard bits of plastic then he'll yeah. cast that and then he'll um or he'll make a mold of that then he'll cast it in um like a resin i think it i wrote it down over here um in an aqua resin and then it's painted uh the surface of that cast which is really uh, physical texture and you can really tell what materials were initially casted uh -huh. um, is painted like in a Trump low way to where yeah. it sort of fools you at first. Yeah. Um, it's the negative of the positive. Um, so once you get up close, you realize that indeed it's not trying to trick you. It's just, it took the impression of this thing. Right. But, um, mm -hmm. They're, they're pretty modestly scaled, maybe 22 by 30. Um, sort of collaging using duct tape cardboard trash bags and they're misleading in the sense that um it looks kind of like trash art and i hate to use the word like unmonumental as a yeah, uh, right. catch-all for a certain type of way that something looks but there is that in it and then you yeah. realize that it's actually this really high crafted object that um you know so it sort of you. fakes you out. Yeah, way. totally. It makes you really have to take a second look to realize what is what am I looking at? Yeah, absolutely. It's real exciting to, to be confronted with a work of art like that. Yeah. It makes you question, it sounds like. And then in terms of like the the relationship of that work to Faith Gay's work where she's literally using tape, literally using cardboard, literally using like ribbons and printed material and stuff. I think that both of those initially have the same material, but there's a, a, a sort of switch um, you know, in their presentation mode. So yeah. it'll be nice to have those paired together. Oh, um, yeah. Sounds perfect. Yeah, hopefully he'll be able to come to the opening. Oh. Um, and he's one of the people that I hate to even talk about Robert Rauschenberg, but when I saw the work, I was like, wow, this is so, like, early <laughs> Rauschenberg. Um, oh, that's so back great to this compliment. deep, Yeah, this deep um, painting history. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the last person in the show, this guy named T.J. Donovan, uh, he's currently getting his MFA 
um, at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. I was in Chicago last February uh, exhibiting some paintings and one of his great friends, um, I know from years ago from the Vermont Studio Center we were introduced, I instantly fell in love with his work oh. and he does this really weird thing. Um, when I first saw them I thought like, wow this is Richard Diebenkorn except all of the marks are actually incisions and they're like puzzle pieces that fit together. Uh -huh. um, so they're uh, fairly small, kind of like eight by 10, you know, 10 by 12, something like that. Yeah. Uh, they sort of riff on hard edge painting, but um, <laughs> the way that they work is they're um, stacked together. So it's big sheets of, um, I think, mat board, foam core, and wooden dowels and stuff. And they're glued together in these successive layers. And then moments are sliced out and there's these incisions that are made and then like a dowel rod will be painted a certain color so that's like the brush stroke and that'll be inlaid in there. So oh, it's wow. these, um, these flat surfaces that are um, um, just built in a really sort of um, precise method in terms of how they're constructed but right. then um, with the application of paint it's pretty loose and sloppy, so there's a lot of uh, sort of hiccups and a yeah. lot of um, accidental marks that happen that he happily embraces. And mm -hmm. so there's a, sort of a surface history to all the stuff. Uh, I think he's using like paint as glue at a <laughs> lot of moments, which is really cool and exciting yeah. to me. So when you know when you smash these two things together, sort of little bits of it like puff out of the sides and. Um, yeah. there's, it feels like they're, um, kind of controlled chaos, you know, he knows how they're going to go together and right. when he smashes them together, all of these interesting accidents happen that I think really, um, just make the work so much more nuanced and sort of get them away from some of the stuff that I think he's referencing. Um, the, the palette of his works are really bright. Uh, kind of candy colored, almost like um, fetus finishy sort of. Um, yeah. yeah. Though kind of at the same time pushing against that. So I think with all the artists in the show, you know, they, I don't know how to, I mean, I think that they exist in many different worlds, painting worlds at once where they can, um, at a certain moment, I wonder if this, this just made some sounds. Yeah, oh, that's just it's a like a doorbell or something. So, uh. Oh, no, there's some report due for Central Track. Um, where they can exist in all these different modes of painting at the same time. And right. they can work against or with it, just depending on how they want to do it. Like, I feel that they don't. Um, they're not strictly adhering to any set of rules. I think that they um, are freely looking to the past and just picking what they want and colliding it together to make something new. I think a painting, is, I think all of painting right now is in that kind of state. And it sounds so interesting. You, you, the, the four artists, the four painters even, if you want to call them painters, uh, are constructing a painting. And totally. That, that real exciting because it's going on in photography too. Yep. There's this group doing constructed photography they make these elaborate things and then they photograph them and and it's like you centered in on people that are addressing painting as a constructed piece yep it's very exciting yeah and i'm trying to figure out like what it is and i don't want to speak for any of the artists but i know that the reason that i'm doing this show is because i'm thrilled with this kind of work and this is the way that i'm working so yeah. every time that i um i'm looking through the lens of my interests whenever i'm looking at other yeah. artists work um, I and I just, see your work definitely. You could be the fifth artist <laughs> in the show because yeah. it makes so much sense. Because when I first saw your work, you know, when I saw your work in singular pieces, to me it was never quite finished till I saw them in groupings, and yeah. I thought, "Wow, this is tremendous!" You know, this guy's onto something. There is something that there is something about um, multiple works being put together to sort of form a cohesive vision and I think with that show I tried to do that so I tried to each of the artists is doing something similar in terms of um, uh, you know all the stuff that I've mentioned beforehand but then you know from one another they couldn't be working in sort of 
different modes and methods. So depending on whether we're talking about like cast aqua resin or duct taped pieces of paper or like plaster that's laid on top of canvas, you know, they're all, um, they're all doing their own thing, but I think together we'll form a vision of a really like wide open landscape where uh, a lot of things are possible in, um, you know, what is often deemed to be like a dead thing such as right. painting, you know. Yeah. Well, it sounds like the next show should be called Construction Site and it can have you in it as well. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I could just go under fake names or something. <laughs> you know, what you were saying about bit like photography coming coming out of the frame or whatever, becoming physical, painting coming physical. Um, there's another reminder yeah. for Monday, 225, for Laura. Um, I think that... Uh, for me personally, mm. I've realized that it has something to do with the way that I'm interacting with images and how 99% of the images that I see are on a yeah. flat surface. And right. so there's something that really wants me, uh, or wants, when I make work and when I look at work, I want it to be something you can only get when you're in the physical realm with it. Um, right. Yeah. So. It could have something to do with the proliferation of the image or the internet or something like that. I, again, I don't want to speak for them, but me personally, I think that um, as I've been relying more and more on seeing work um, on the internet, I enjoy seeing work in the physical, um, actually addressing those three dimensions in real life. Right. Yeah. Well, it's I think because we're also glued to the vernacular of looking at screen, the language of screens, and we're traveling on the internet to look at exhibitions. But it's different when you really walk in and see the real thing as a painting as an object. Yeah, you know? painting as it's, an object. It has a physicality to it. Uh, even my paintings on aluminum, that substrate is it's a physical sculptural object in a totally. way. And I always thought of it linked to Donald Judd in a, when huh. I first started. Using it. Yeah, Even I guess the, that just, material is like uh, a pretty commonly commonly used thing by him. I just went out to the Chinati Foundation and saw um, the big like bunkers full of his aluminum oh. aluminum pieces that were beautiful. The sun was setting, and the uh, the amount of like reflectivity in that space is pretty um, spectacular. Yeah. That's so funny. We mentioned, you know, we mentioned Greenberg and talking about Judd. And when I was a young painter coming out of grad school, I really hated Judd too. You know, it's not that I hated. I was. I think I was, you know, rubbing up against that purity. Yeah. And I wanted to make impure paintings. You yeah. know, and bring subject matter into abstraction. And but now, as I'm older, I have such a great respect for what Judd did. I mean, it's some beautiful work. But it's not the kind of work that I need to be doing. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the role of a young person is like to come up against their forefathers. Yeah, absolutely. I think every generation does it. And, and it keeps things fresh and exciting. So if you were going to, what would be the, following up this show, let's say, what would you do? Uh, would you do an expanded version of uh, constructed painting or... Uh, What's your thoughts after looking at this as a group? Have you walked through the gallery and had time? No, to I mean, the work is still coming. So I'm like thrilled to see it. Uh, a lot of this stuff, um, I've only seen one or two images from each of the artists in real life. So it's okay. all coming here within the next week. Um, yeah. We're going to hang it, uh, what, in a week and a half. The show opens March 9th from 8 to 10 yeah. p.m. Um, and I'll be able to answer that question at the opening. Okay, I can't wait to yeah, me get you in a corner and drill you about it. <laughs> well, hopefully you'll get an opportunity to meet some of the artists, too. I know that Ivan was thinking about flying down. I know yeah. that both Faith Gay and Shane Tolbert, the Texas artists, are definitely going to be in attendance. So right. it should be great. Um, but, yeah, I just – this was fun, John. Yeah, I enjoyed it, and I can't – now you got – you piqued my excitement. I got I you hooked. Gonna be there. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate your time very much. You're welcome. I enjoyed it. It's always good to speaking with you. Cheers. Yeah. Take care.